Family Theater presents Jeanette MacDonald. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Cass Wiggins' Rookie. And now, to introduce the drama, here is your hostess, Jeanette MacDonald. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our drama, Cass Wiggins, Rookie. <laughs> I'm known to all baseball fans as Wild Bill Wiley, and I'm the manager of the Hornets in the American League. Early in April, we stop off at Little Rock on our way east for a game with a local club. During batting practice, I'm shooting the breeze with a bunch of the newspaper boys who've been assigned to cover the Hornets' spring training. With me is Jimmy Clark, 11 years now, the team star catcher, a college grad and a guy as smart as Mo Berg ever was. Mo could get away with murder with the umps because he always cussed them out in Latin and ancient Greek. Jimmy uses Sanskrit and Hindustani. One of the pencil pushers, Jack Ford of the Courier Independent, is a fast guy with the needle. And I've already got a red neck by the time he says... Maybe you can take this one today, Bill. The Little Rock Skipper tells me he's going to start his second stringers. Go fry an egg, Ford. Maybe we haven't looked so good so far, but I'm running this ball club for the owners and not for a newspaper punk like you. I'm bringing it along slow. <laughs> so we've all observed. You think you'll have it out of low and in a second by Labor Day? Oh. Skip it, Bill. <laughs> Mr. Ford is merely inferring that the fans of the Courier Independent who droolingly digest his daily peerless journalistic efforts are anxiously awaiting his assurance that the Hornets will be able to suit up on opening day. He can tell them anything he wants. I... What do you want, kid? An autograph? No, sir, Mr. Wiley. Least ways an autograph ain't what I come to see you about special like. All right, all right. What is it? Well, I, well, I was kind of hoping maybe you'd give me a chance to pitch for the Hornets. What experience you have? Well, I've been pitching now for three years for the team in my hometown, that's Chapultepec. I mean, what professional experience you had? What league you ever play in? Well, I reckon I ain't never played in no league. Sometimes we play the teams in Blowgord and QB Center and Dabneyville. What? And... First, I got to talk with a wise and I'm a reporter, and then it's a hick that wants to jump from the semi-pros of the big time. Come on, Jimmy, let's get away from here before I blow a gasket. Yeah, I'll be with you in a minute, Bill. Uh... My name's Jack Ford, and I'm a baseball reporter for the Courier Independent. What's your name, son? It's Slash Cassius Tecumseh Wiggins, but everybody calls me Cass. Yeah, I can see why. I'm very happy to meet you, Cass. There's just a chance I might be able to help you. No fooling, Miss Ford. You mean help me to get to pitch for the Hornets? Oh, I can't promise, but you never can tell. Uh, where's this place you live? Well, it's Chapultepec. It's west of here, over on the Frisco Railroad that runs from Monet, Missouri to Paris, Texas. With your good looks, I imagine you're quite a hand with the ladies, huh, Cass? Oh, shuck it, Mr. Ford. Oh. Cut it out, Jack. You're not funny. How about it, Cass? I just got me one gal, Mr. Ford. Her name's Effie Sue Abernathy. Her and me, we're fixing to get ourselves married. Mm -hmm. I got her picture with me right here, right here in the back of my turnip. See? Well, that's a mighty romantic thing, Cass, carrying your sweetheart's picture in the back of your watch. Shucking, Mr. Ford. Effie Sue's the prettiest and the sweetest and the smartest gal in the whole of Chapultepec. I bet she is. Well, Cass, I'll see what I can do for you. Just as I said, I can't promise anything, but I'll try. Well, shucking, Mr. Ford, nobody couldn't hardly ask for no more than that. I'm sure proud I got to pump your paw. Well, I'm glad to meet you, Cass. See you later. Yes, sir. I, I, I sure hope so. When you're the star pitcher of the Hornets, I'll write you up in my column. <laughs> Your idea of humor is a weird and wonderful thing, Jack. It's also cruel. What was the idea giving that yokel such a build-up? Jimmy, my boy, you never know when something or somebody may be good for a gag. <laughs> Jack Ford, he's the baseball reporter for the Courier Independent newspaper, said he'd sure try to get me on the Hornets. Well, you don't reckon he was just a-funnin' with you, do you, Cass? Oh, shuckins, no, Effie Sue. 
Well, just the same, I'd feel better if Mr. Wiley let you show him how you can hit a knot hole in a fence 18 times out of 20 with a baseball. Well, don't you fret yourself none, honey. That'll come later. When Mr. Ford gets through talking with Mr. Wiley, I'll bet a pewter dollar again the crack in a tiny teacup. The hornets will be running after me to giant up with them. <laughs> So it's here. I told you, Mr. Ford, to do it. Look, it's a telegram. Well, well what's it say? Well, Cass? listen to this. Yeah. Mr. Lask Ashes, Tecumseh Wiggins, Chapultepec, Arkansas. Please report to the Hornets at Briggs Stadium in Detroit at once. Salary open. We'll discuss it upon your arrival. Hurry as we need you badly. Wild Bill Wiley, manager of the Hornets. Oh, ain't that wonderful? Well, I eat for sure, Cass. Huh? How come Mr. Wiley needs you so bad if he ain't never seen your pitch? Well, Mr. Ford must have told him about me. But just how does Mr. Ford know how you can hit a knot hole 18 times out of 20 with a baseball? Effie Sue, don't you want me to join up with the Hornets? Of course I do, Cass. But somehow it seems like I can smell a polecat at the pie supper. I'd hate it the worst way if something was to hurt you, like... Like if you was to find out you'd played the fool. Oh, Effie Sue. Just the same, don't go to see Mr. Wiley till the team's at St. Louis. That way, the bus fare back to Chapultepec won't be so much if it comes out somebody's been putting the big britches on you. Now get the guys started, will you, Jimmy? Not that it'll do any good the way this gang of snake killers been hitting. Howdy, Mr. Wally. I got your telegram, and, and I like a busted hamstring getting here fast as I could. I'm raring to go. I didn't send it. Wait any. a minute, Bill. It's that kid who tried to talk to you back in Little Rock. Huh? Uh, let me have that telegram, Cass, and go over by the batting cage for a couple of minutes, will you? Why, sure. Just call me when you're needing me. Hey, what is this, a gag? I think so. Look at this telegram. Why, why? Is... Well, I never sent that. Of course you didn't, Bill. But I'm certain Jack Ford did. Oh. He gave this kid an awful ribbing in Little Rock and practically told him his influence with you would get him on the team. I'll have them both tossed out of the park. So that Jack can have a good laugh at your expense? The Courier Independent has several thousand readers every day, Bill. Ah, so what do I do? So go along with the gag. Let this Wiggins kid pitch batting practice. Huh? When Jack sees him out on the hill, he won't know what's happened. He'll be like the joker who gave away the wrong cigar and lit the one that was loaded. Say, that's an idea, Jimmy. This apple knocker's been playing semi-pro, so he can probably at least get him over the plate. And I'll catch him. Okay. And what'd you say his name was? Wiggins. Cass Wiggins. Uh, come here, Wiggins. Yes, sir, Mr. Wiley. You don't need to fret yourself none about wages till you see how good I can do. Uh, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. How would you like to pitch bat in practice so I can sort of look you over? Yes, sir. In a Hornet uniform? Sure. And can I have my picture took to send back home? There wasn't nobody in Chapultepec took any stock in you really wanting me. Poetic justice would seem to indicate a photographer from the Courier Independent, Bill. This gets better and better, Jimmy. Sure, you can have your picture taken cast by a real newspaper photographer. Oh, gosh. Now, let's go over to the clubhouse now and get you suited up. You want to look good and snappy in that picture you're going to send back home? <laughs> Did it do good, Mr. Clark? Bill, Cass here wants to know if his efforts met with your approval. He did okay, kid. Now go take a shower for yourself. Then you can sit in one of the boxes and watch the game. Well, let him sit on the bench in uniform, will you, Bill? Huh? The player limit isn't in effect yet, and he's earned it. Okay. You can sit with the players, Wiggins. Gosh, I sure do thank you, Mr. Wiley, and you too, Mr. Clark. Jimmy, the boys look better today than they have for a month. They were taking their cuts, and they weren't missing. Hey, you can thank young Wiggins for that. He wasn't that bad. He was that good. What? I had him throwing to the fellow's strength, not their weakness. High and inside to Fullerton, low and wide to Chris Marino, so on right down the line. But the thing about it is, Bill, he never missed by more than two inches where I signaled him to put the ball. He's got as nearly perfect control as any pitcher I ever handled. Yeah, his fastball looks sharp, too. Three out of five had hopped. I wonder if he's got anything else. I don't know, but it's barely possible he may not need anything else. When Dizzy Dean came up to the cards from Houston, all he had was a high, fast one and control. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we're talking like a couple of saps, Jimmy. Nobody, I mean nobody, makes the hop straight from semi-pro to the big leagues. Ah, uh, you're undoubtedly right, Bill. But what a study in scarlet Jack Ford's face would be the first time he had to write, the winning pitcher for the Hornets was their sensational rookie, Cass Wiggins, the pride of Chapultepec, Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
We won that afternoon. The sound of our bats against the horsehide was sweet music as the boys shook off their slump and combed Ned Garver and Tommy Byrne for 14 hits. The final score was 8-1 to one as Bill McIntyre held the Brownies to five singles. After the game, Jimmy Clark asked me, What happens now to this Wiggins youngster, Bill? Oh, I suppose I'll give him train fare back to where he came from. He's got the picture of himself in a Hornets uniform. Bill, we just finished a little team conference. Yeah? Yeah. Fellas were hoping you'd let him go along with us. They figure he's a talisman, an antidote to the whammy. Mm. You know how superstitious ballplayers are. I don't think there was one who realized I had Cass pitching to their strength this afternoon. But they teed off on him, so they figure that any time he's tossing batting practice, they'll have their slugging clothes on. Yeah, but maybe the next time he'll be wilder than a Kansas Cyclone. I don't think so, Bill. My personal opinion is that he's one of those naturals that show up about once in 10,000. Say, do you think you could make a big league picture out of him? I don't know, but I'd like to try. We could get in an hour or so of practice in the mornings. He, uh, he could room with me, too. What? You, a loner, the only player on the team who rates a room to himself? And you're willing to double up with an Ozark hillbilly who probably travels with nothing but an extra celluloid collar tucked in beside his guitar? Say, what is the honest dope behind all this, Jimmy? Well... All right. I don't like Jack Ford. In fact, I detest him. He's a common muscle mammal of the genus Mephitis. Huh? Oh, that's a polite way of calling him a skunk. Oh. He unjustly needles you and the team in his column. The way he treated young Wiggins in Little Rock was a crying shame. I don't like wise guys or practical jokers, and I'd give a thousand dollars to see him get his hot foot in reverse in spades. That's all. That's enough. The kid stays with the Hornets, and he's all yours. <laughs> Well, we go along for about a month at a better than 750 clip, and the boys are liking Cass Wiggins better all the time. Jimmy Clark works with him every day, teaching him stuff it took Jimmy himself 11 years to learn. And then it happened. Victor Rico, my star lefty, comes up with his salary wings so sore he couldn't break a pane of glass. And we're going into Fenway Park for a four-game series with the Red Sox. I'm tearing out what little hair I've got left when Jimmy Clark makes a suggestion. Bill, I can't guarantee it, but I'm almost sure that Cass is ready to go. Yeah, how's his hook? Improving a little. He's still no Tommy Bridges. What can I lose, Jimmy? One ball game. I'll never hear the last of it. He does the kite act. You'll never hear the last of it if he comes through. Okay. I'll start Jerry today and Sandy tomorrow. That'll bring the kid up on Friday. And do me one favor, Bill. Don't tell him he's going to go until we get out to the park on Friday. <laughs> I wish I could tell you the kid was sensational in his first big league game, the way it always is in the stories. But no, he was in trouble from the first inning on, and nothing saved him except the way Jimmy Clark handled him. But we won three to two. And that night in their hotel room after an early movie... I just read a letter to Miguel back home in Chapultepec, Mr. Clark. Would you maybe read it and see if it sounds all right? All right, if you want me to. And by the way, Cass, my name is Jimmy. That Mr. Clark business makes me feel as though I were ready for the voluntary retired list. Okay, Jimmy. Here it is. Ah, let's see. Dear Effie Sue, today I win my first... Uh, the proper word is one, Cass. Well, how come? Didn't I win it? I've always contended that the grammarians were too inflexible in their rules. Huh? Let's skip it. I'm sure your sweetheart will know what you mean. Oh, sure she will. See, today I win my first big league ball game, but I will win many more. Mm -hmm. You know Las Cassius Tecumseh, better known as Cass Wiggins. Ha ha. Maybe I will never lose one. Yeah, I was afraid of that, Cass. Afraid of what, Jimmy? It's known as a sudden increased convexity of the cranium. Oh, what's uh, that? Someday I'll translate it for you into Americanese. Oh, okay. It's an insidious disease, and I only hope your attack is a mild one. By the skin of his teeth and the help of Jimmy Clark, Cass wins two more close ones before we return home for a stand against the Western clubs. Most of the married fellas have apartments for their wives and families, but the single fellas usually stay in hotels and eat out. The first night we're back, the kid tries a beanery that's just around the corner from the Courier Independent Building. Your check's 89 cents, sir. Yes, um, uh, here's a dollar bill. Here's your change, 11 cents. Uh... Let me have one of them cigars, please, ma'am. One of them good ones right there, them ten centers. Yes, sir. Here you are, sir. Us pitchers for the Hornets don't never smoke them cheap cigars. Are you a pitcher for the Hornets? Yes, I'm, I sure am. What's your name? Last cash is to come. 
<laughs> I'm in the Hitch Cash Wagons. Oh, I've heard of you. Huh? Gee, I, I wonder if you let me have your autograph. Ah, oh, sure. Write it here, will you? <laughs> My name's uh, Jeannie Mills. Say, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was wondering, Miss Mills, I mean, uh, well, I, I was uh, hoping, well, I, I was uh, thinking, <laughs> it did uh, be nice if maybe we could uh, go see a movie sometime. I mean, I mean, together. Well, I, I never go with somebody I don't know, Mr. Wiggins. Uh, particularly, uh, well, it seems like we did have a real introduction, though. I get off tonight at 8.30. Oh, I, I didn't mean, I didn't mean tonight. Uh, some other night, Miss Mills. <laughs> I'll be back. Uh, I'll be seeing you again. <laughs> Uh, Jeannie. Good evening, Mr. Ford. Say, guess who was in here about a half hour ago? Farley Granger? Nope. Well, then it must have been Gorgeous George. Nope. It was Cass Wiggins, that new pitcher for the Hornets. And, uh, he asked me for a date. Uh, you're not exactly overpaid for working in this glorified chew and choke joint, are you, Jeannie? <laughs> I'll say I'm not. A little fast extra money wouldn't be unwelcome, would it? What do you think? When are you through tonight? Eight o'clock. Hmm, I'll see you then. I got a little deal in mind that should be right up your alley. I start cash against the Indians, and he's ahead three to two going into the ninth. Then, with Larry Doby on first, he feeds Big Luke Easter a gopher ball. So that's the final score. Four to three favor Cleveland. After the boys have had their showers and dressed. Cass, you threw a high hard one to Easter when I signaled for a low outside pitch. It didn't get away from you, did it? No, sir. It didn't. You deliberately crossed me, didn't you? Yes, sir. Why did you do it? It lost us the ball game. Well, Jeannie says a pitcher ought to know better than a catcher what to throw. Oh? Who's Jeannie? Jeannie Mills. Who's Jeannie Mills? She's the cashier at the E-Lite Cafe where I go to eat most times. Where's the E-Lite Cafe? It's on Flower Street, right near 8th. Do you think now that this Jeannie Mills is right? That you know better than I what a batter can and can't hit? No, sir. Not now. I don't reckon I do. Well, then we'll forget it this time. If Wild Bill knew about it, he'd fine you a month's pay. And remember this, Cass. A pitcher never crosses the man behind the plate. If he does, he's liable to tear his catcher's arm off at the elbow. Yes, sir. I'll remember. Uh, I got to tell you something, Jimmy. Hmm? Jeannie and me, we're fixing to get ourselves married. There's something vaguely familiar in that statement, Cass. Could it be an echo? Oh, shuckings, Jimmy, don't row hide me. Effie Sue was all right back in Chipotle Peck. But not in the city? No, sir. Uh, it ain't exactly that. Then what is it? Why? No, it... don't answer me, Cass. I already know. Your cranial convexity is still increasing by leaps and bounds. Huh? Yeah? What's on your mind, Jimmy? Cass Wiggins, Bill. Oh? He's gotten involved with a cashier at some hash house on Flower near 8th. What? He says they're going to be married. Well, how about the little prairie flower back in Arkansas? I just wired her the money to fly here from Little Rock. Well, what's the matter with the cashier? She's been advising him not to pay any attention to my signals. What? According to her, a smart pitcher like Cass knows better than I do what'll fool the batter. Why, that's stupid. I've got a sneaking hunch her theory's not an original one. What do you mean? The place where she works is just around the corner from the Courier Independent Building. It's quite a coffee hangout for the boys who work on that rag. Jack Ford. He may be behind this and he may not. I intend to find out by going direct to Mr. Ford himself and posing that question. You're probably wondering why I sent for you, Miss Abernathy. Just call me Effie Sue, Mr. Clark. All right, Effie Sue. What I'm going to say to you is a simple statement of fact, not a boast. I'm the man who's worked night and day to teach Cass Wiggins enough about big league baseball to keep him here with the Hornets. Did you know that the telegram he received was a hoax, a fake? That it was not sent to him by Mr. Wiley, the manager of the Hornets? I always suspicioned somebody was making game of him. It was sent by a newspaper reporter with a warped sense of humor. I talked to this man earlier this evening, and he admitted it under slight pressure. Was was his name Mr. Jack Ford? It was. I figured it'd be. Cass bragged him up so big when he come back from Little Rock, but, but he sure done Cass a, a big favor sending for him like he'd done. He did and he didn't, Effie Sue. 
If Mr. Wiley had sent Cass back home, which would have happened 990 times out of 1,000, the lad would have been the laughing stock at Chapultepec. As it was, we planned to keep him for one day and let him pitch batting practice, just to turn the tables on Jack Ford. Then my Cass ain't a good pitcher? He wasn't. He can be a great one. As a cashier in a restaurant where Cass often eats, Jack Ford knows her and he bribed her to lead Cass on. She's been getting Cass to do things that'll ruin him as a ball player. And what's more, Cass tells me they're going to be married. <gasps> what's her name and where she live? Well, I'll, I'll sue her for alienation of infections. Now, wait a minute, Effie Sue. Just a minute. Uh, You'd have to actually be married to Cass to make that charge stand up. Yeah, but I could steer out of a year's growth just supposing she was to think I was Mrs. Cass Wiggins. How could you do that, Effie Sue? Well, it'd make Cass look almighty low down, but according to your own tell, he wouldn't be no lower than her. I can do it, Mr. Clark, and I can do it without telling a single solitary untruth. Can I help you, miss? I uh, reckon not, thank you. Uh, I'm just looking for Cass Wiggins, but uh, I don't see him in here. He comes in real often. Would you care to leave him a message? Thank you. That's right neighborly of you. Uh, just tell him it's from Mrs. Cass Wiggins. Who? Who did you say? Mrs. Cass Wiggins. You mean you're his wife? Maybe I am. Maybe I ain't. But let me tell you this, Miss Jeannie Mills. You are going to take this pencil and this piece of paper and write what I tell you to write, or you'll sure be a finding out. Mr. Cass Wiggins, dear sir, I have found you out for what you are. Please never let me see you again. Yours truly, Miss Jeannie Mills. Oh, this is perfect, Effie Sue, but I, I still don't see how you got it. Well, I didn't tell a single solitary untruth, Mr. Clark. I sure would have, though, if Cassie's pa weren't named Las Cassius the same as him. So, his ma's rightly, Mrs. Cass Wiggins. <laughs> All right. Now, here's what we'll do. He'll pitch against Detroit day after tomorrow. You stay here till I come for you. I'll give Cass this note while we're suiting up. When he comes out to warm up, he'll see you sitting in the first row of the boxes right behind the Hornets' dugout. So, you see what you might have gotten into, Cass? You're a mighty lucky man. Gosh, Jimmy, if I was a jaybird, I wouldn't have brains enough to fly backwards. Now I probably lost my Effie Sue, too, because I ain't wrote to her since I don't know when. Well, maybe it's not that bad. Let's go, Cass. It's time to start warming up. Cass! Oh, Cass! Here I am. Effie Sue! Oh, Effie Sue, it can't be you. Uh, when'd you get here? Uh, uh, what'd you come for? Oh, I just flew up in a big airy plane to see Cass Wiggins win himself a ball game. Well, don't you go away after the game's over. I just gotta talk to you. Well, if you want me to stay, you better do one thing, Cass Wiggins. What's that? You better show these Detroit Tigers how the cow ate the cabbage. All right, shake it up, Well, Cass. don't you worry yourself none, Effie Sue. I'll whip them slap-sided. So that's your Effie Sue, Cass. That's her. Ain't she as pretty as a speckled pup under a red wagon? I got to win this one today, Jimmy. You hold up a needle and I'll thread it. Okay, boy. And Jimmy, hey, uh, what was that thing you said was wrong with me? Uh, acute convexity of the cranium? Yeah, that was it. What's it mean? Well, it doesn't matter now, Cass. I'm not a doctor, but I'd say your recovery's complete. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, here once again is Jeanette MacDonald. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Tonight, I'd like to take just a minute to offer my congratulations to Family Theatre. It has been just recently announced that Family Theatre has been made recipient of the coveted John Lester Award as radio's foremost dramatic series for the season 1951 and 1952. In making this award, Mr. Lester based his selection upon the high moral tone, wholesomeness, and superior entertainment value of the dramatic vehicles selected for broadcast, as well as for the excellence of the performances of the casts. And so, 
to the Mutual Broadcasting System, which makes these programs possible, and to the Family Theatre staff, its producer, its director, its musicians, and its technicians, I would like to extend my heartiest congratulations as a representative of the many stars of stage, screen, and radio who have appeared on the program to help advance the cause of family unity through family prayer. You know, when we think of family prayer, we quite properly visualize mothers, fathers, and children gathered in their homes, saying their prayers together in peace and harmony. When this is done, it brings a beautiful and rewarding experience to each day. Thousands of families in our country are restoring the old, time-tested custom of actually gathering together in prayer. Of course, we, we have to remember that many of our families are or will be scattered. But the important thing to remember is that, though separated, we need never grow apart. We need never have that sense of feeling alone in the world. There is a way to preserve the great value of family unity. Prayer can bring all of us together at some time each day. It will maintain the unity that comes from God's protection of families that, that speak their faith in him through simple and humble prayer. Though we be at opposite ends of the earth, we're united. And in this great and vital way, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Cass Wiggins' Rookie. Jeanette MacDonald was your hostess. Others in our cast were Billy Baucom, Jenny Jackson, Ed Begley, Howard Culver, Dave Young, and Marianne Cape. The script was written for Family Theater by Jack Mitchell, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and the program was directed by Joseph F. Mansfield. We of Family Theater are deeply grateful for having been made the recipient of the John Lester Award. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our Family Theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lafrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week when Family Theater will present The Visitor starring Jane Wyatt and Ward Bond. Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family Theater's broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Thank you.